Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 37th episode of Don't Forget the Popcorn. I've been watching a lot of anime films, and one director who may be considered the king of them all is Hayao Miyazaki. This dude is a pioneer in not only anime films, but animated media in general, contributing to movies, TV shows, and manga, and has been in the game for over 50 years. His 12th feature, How Do You Live, will be released this summer, so with that, I thought we'd do Hayao Miyazaki Ranked. Now, keep in mind, this is just the director, Hayao Miyazaki. This isn't Studio Ghibli as a whole. If you guys want that video, I've seen pretty much all those movies, so we can do that too. But for now, we're just talking Hayao. This list is a combo of my favorites and what influence I think they've had on the genre and the world of cinema. So I will try to be as unbiased as possible. So let's get into Hayao Miyazaki Ranked. Number 11, Porco Rosso, 1992. Porco Rosso follows an Italian World War I ex-fighter pilot who is currently a bounty hunter chasing air pirates in the Adriatic Sea. The man is cursed and lives his days as a human pig. There is an American pilot who is trying to track him down for more reasons than one. The film follows the American pilot trying to catch Rosso until the two finally confront each other face to face. Porco Rosso is a good movie, but for me, it would be at the back of the list. For me, it was decent, but didn't give me that warm feeling a Hayo film usually leaves me with. Alongside the rest of his filmography, this movie feels a bit basic, and that's saying a lot because it is a good watch. But the third act of the film is a complete mess, and it does fall a little off the rails for me. The humor isn't that great, and the characters aren't really any that I think most people can really connect with. There's some fun action and dogfights in the air, but it lacks the emotional element that most of his films have. Overall, I will give Porco Rosso a 7 out of 10. Number 10, The Wind Rises, 2013. One of his more tragic movies, The Wind Rises follows a young man with big aspirations of becoming a pilot, but he is nearsighted, which prevents him from doing so. Instead, he becomes one of the best airplane designers of all time. He falls in love with a lovely lady who supports and loves him to the fullest on his quest of becoming the best plane engineer of his time. This film is a departure from what we've seen from him in the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. This story is much more emotional on a human level. No fantasy elements, magic, or mythical creatures. A straightforward story about life and the human condition. This film is rich with themes involving love, dedication, and the sacrifices everyone makes in order to achieve a goal. Hale really loves his planes. Overall, I will give The Wind Rises a 7.2 out of 10. Number 9. My Neighbor Totoro, 1988. I'm sure a lot of people feel like I have this movie misplaced. My Neighbor Totoro follows two young girls who befriend spirits in the woods in a post-war rural Japan. Their mother is sick and the spirits in the woods serve as friends and they learn a lot from them. This is an iconic film with Totoro even serving as Studio Ghibli's mascot. It is beautifully animated with unique spirit characters, a cool cat bus that's kind of scary, and a story about love and loss. Now, the reason this movie is here is because I simply think he's made quite a few films that are better than this. This is one that I think carries a lot of nostalgia for a lot of people, but I did not grow up with this movie, so I guess it just isn't there for me. It's iconic in what it did for the genre and pop culture, but as far as the story, it's just okay. Nothing too crazy that we haven't seen in any other movie from the 80s. The film brings to life the power of animation, and it should be respected as such. Overall, I will give My Neighbor Totoro a 7.5 out of 10. Number 8. The Castle of Cagliostro, 1979. Heyo's first feature film and a total banger. From this point on, I do love every single movie that will be named, despite what order they land. They can be easily moved around on a given day. Castle of Cagliostro is adapted from the manga Lupin the Third. There have been several adaptations made from Lupin, but I think Heyo did it the best. He did work on the TV show as well. Even though Lupin in this film is displayed as more of a hero or an anti-hero than the devious villain he really is, it takes nothing away from this simple story that has a perfect execution. 
This movie is about a young thief who wants to save a princess from the criminal underworld of Cagliostro and its ruler. That simple. In 1979, this was a groundbreaking achievement. This movie is funny, fun, well animated, and paces perfectly with great action and laughs. Although this film lacks depth and emotion, it serves up a blueprint for an anime blockbuster. Car chases, fights, explosions, a nice cushy ending that leaves everyone happy. This is one of his most rewatchable movies. Overall, I will give Castle of Cagliostro a 7.9 out of 10. Number 7, Ponyo 2008. Honestly, Ponyo, I think, is one of his most underrated films, and it is one of my favorites. I'm a sucker for visuals and animation, and this movie has some of the best in his catalog. This film is about a goldfish who escapes from the ocean and is saved by a young boy. As a two-bond, she desires more and more to become human. Although I'll admit, this one is more for kids, it still has some great themes of companionship, parenthood, and desires. This film captures the essence of what it is to be a child in a brilliant way and is one of the best looking movies I have ever seen. It didn't reinvent the wheel and it gets trashed on a lot, but I did love this film and if I was doing a favorites list, this film would be higher. Overall, I will give Ponyo an 8.2 out of 10. Number 6, Howl's Moving Castle, 2004. A fan favorite and one of the most creative films ever made, Howl follows a girl named Sophie who gets cursed and turns old by a witch. She meets Howl and gets caught up in his resistance in fighting for the king. Howl is full of some great characters, cool magic, and some fun action sequences, some brilliant voice acting in both American and the Japanese versions. The story, in my opinion, leaves a little to be desired, but I'll say it can be overlooked with the spectacle on display. This is one for the fantasy and magic lovers. The castle is such a cool design and concept, and it's so well executed. I would say this is one of Miyazaki's easiest films to digest. Overall, I will give Howl's Moving Castle an 8.3 out of 10. Number 5. Princess Mononoke, 1997. Okay, this is where it really started getting hard. The top five are some of the best animated features ever made. Princess Mononoke is the darkest, grittiest film on this list. Tagged with a PG-13 rating, this film follows a young prince who gets caught up in the war between the gods of the forest and the humans. He befriends Princess Mononoke, who was raised by the wolf gods and is on the side of protecting the forest from the humans. In terms of themes, this is one of the most thematically rich films Hayao has done. It goes over environmentalism in a major way and is very relevant to things going on today. Themes of trust and respect, the power of the matriarchy, and so many more. This film is powerful on many levels and makes you empathize and understand why Mother Nature is so important and the importance of your carbon footprint. It shows us the importance of holding your values high and fighting for something greater than oneself. Besides all of the thematic elements, this movie is action-packed with some epic fight scenes and gorgeous shots of the forest. It's magical with some cool characters and some heart-wrenching scenes. This is a must-watch for all anime fans. Overall, I will give Princess Mononoke a 9 out of 10. Number 4. The Castle in the Sky, 1986. Castle in the Sky follows the story of a young orphan girl and a boy who are trying to protect a sacred gem from bandits, the army, and secret agents all while trying to find the mysterious floating castle in the sky. This is technically the first release from Studio Ghibli after being founded in 1985. Castle in the Sky is a magical adventure film. It's filled with beautiful animation, fun action sequences, and a great soundtrack. Castle in the Sky is one of those films that make you miss being a kid and makes being a kid feel like the best time in the world. A movie filled with imagination and creativity. It captures the essential 80s vibes that we love from that time period and a fun adventure aspect. I think of the Goonies or E.T. in the form of an anime. I believe this film influenced and was influenced by more than just the animated genre, but kids films in general. 
It captures the magical, mysterious vibes the 80s did so well that we saw in a lot of American films. Think of The Dark Crystal, The Labyrinth, The NeverEnding Story, or Empire Strikes Back. Castle in the Sky is one of my personal favorite Miyazaki films and is a must-watch for adventure fans. Overall, I will give Castle in the Sky a 9.1 out of 10. Number three, Kiki's Delivery Service, 1989. This is one of the more tame and straightforward films from our guy. Kiki follows a young witch by the same name who goes out on her own to start her life as a witch and enter womanhood. In her new town, she uses her flying powers to start doing deliveries to earn a living. Even though this is possibly Hale's most simple story, it's one of his best. Kiki as a character, in my opinion, is his most likable protagonist. Her and her black cat are two of the sweetest and cutest characters we've seen in an animated film. This is essentially a coming-of-age story dealing with a girl who is blossoming and becoming a young lady as she builds relationships, earns a living, and learns responsibility. Just following Kiki on her day-to-day life and growing with her on her adventure is a whole lot of fun, and this is my personal favorite Miyazaki film. I think in a way, it's also his most heartwarming. Overall, I will give Kiki's Delivery Service a 9.4 out of 10. Number 2. Spirited Away 2001 Consider Miyazaki's magnum opus, Spirited Away follows a 10-year-old girl who enters the world of Kami, a world filled with Japanese spirits. Her parents, because of their greed, get turned into pigs by the witch, and she must work in the bathhouse in order to free herself and her parents to return to the human world. Spirited Away is possibly Hale's prettiest movie. Even over 20 years old, it still holds up, looking sharp and vivid. This film is a fairy tale if I've ever seen one. The bathhouse in this movie represents everything I love about anime. Inside of it, it has all the fun stuff we know and love about the genre, the relaxing vibes and head-clearing atmosphere of a bathhouse, all while being one of the weirdest and sort of scariest places you could be. The spirits in the movie are super unique and creative. You can see how much Pokemon was inspired by this man and their designs. This time period for anime, in general, was an important one. We were seeing the shift from the old style of anime to the new. A more refined look with vivid colors and more crisp and detailed characters and facial features. Anime was evolving with the advancement of tech, and this movie has all that on full display. This film stands out in an era of great animated features and a big jump in the kids and animated genre in general. It deserved that Oscar, and even though some say it's overrated, it is far too important to animation as a genre to ever be ignored. Overall, I will give Spirited Away a 9.7 out of 10. Before I reveal number one, I just wanted to say that I am very grateful of Heyo and the work that he has put out. I think he is one of the best filmmakers of all time and is one of the most influential animated directors we've ever had. All your favorite Pixar directors were watching this man, and he has helped to build one of the best animation empires in the world with Studio Ghibli. This man catalog can easily rival the Disney Renaissance period, and the industry would not be the same without him. So with that, Thank you so much, Hayao Miyazaki, for the work you've left us with. Now, process of elimination. Number one, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, 1984. The film that laid the foundation of what was to become of Studio Ghibli and set the bar for what it takes to make a great animated feature. Spirited Away may have gotten all the love and money, but this is the best overall Miyazaki film. Princess Nausicaa would be my favorite protagonist next to Kiki. Nausicaa tells the story of a young teen princess who has an innate ability to connect with the creatures of the toxic jungle and other animals. She must use her abilities and knowledge to stop the Tolmikians, a ruthless kingdom that wants to eradicate the jungle with ancient weapons. Nausicaa is freaking awesome. She is sweet, caring, brave, intelligent, and most of all, selfless. 
Her flying around and her little hover bird thing and changing the jungle and the creatures in it one by one is just amazing to watch. She embodies the toughness and skill set of Mononoke, but the charm and charisma and tenderness of Kiki. Those three could arguably be his best characters, which a case could be made then that Nausicaa is his best character since she embodies the best of both of them and came before him. This film really laid the floor print for Castle in the Sky, style-wise, to go even further in his imagination with this style of filmmaking. You can see the evolution of Hayo as a director and Ghibli as a studio with each picture building off brick by brick from the foundation that this movie laid out. I've watched this movie many a times and often put it on when I'm going to bed along with Castle in the Sky and Kiki. The vibes of this movie create a perfect setting that puts you in a relaxing state of mind and a place of safety. Nausicaa is a must watch for all animated film fans of all ages. Overall, I will give Nausicaa the Valley of the Wind a 10 out of 10. Guys, thank you so much for watching my Hayao Miyazaki Ranked. Let me know your favorite Hayao Miyazaki film in the comments below. If you would like me to rank all, I believe it's 23 Studio Ghibli films. I've seen pretty much all of them. I think there's maybe two I haven't, so we can do that too if you'd like. Guys, make sure you like and subscribe if you got this far. really appreciate it. I'll be back next week, and don't forget the popcorn.